And now we're getting into the painting of Acadia National Park, seen from an elevation. And um, I want to talk a little bit about an idea, the big picture, which basically means uh, the general concept that that you're trying to present in your painting. The maybe the title. The title could be that concept. For example, uh, Acadia National Park, or water and rocks, or pine and rocks. That's the general concept. And uh, having some guidance or some some idea of the overall idea that you want to present is really helpful in making decisions about what to edit, what to emphasize, and how to approach the watercolor painting. So it's always beneficial to the artist to have an idea of the big picture and to continue to think about it. All right, so what have I done so far? I've been painting the sky. You notice the graded wash. This is something that we practiced. Darker at the top, a little darker on the right side, fading to the horizon. You, you see the ocean placed when that wash was, the upper wash was still wet, so that I have a soft edge on the background. This helps it to recede. Um, and you see I painted that little inlet as a shape, just to remind me that it's there. Secondly, I've gone into the rocks now with the warm gray. This warm gray is made with leftovers and a little bit of the cad red that we'll be using throughout the painting. Yeah, basically, this painting is made up of cobalt blue, cad red, neutral tint, and some cadmium yellow or yellow ochre. As I'm applying the rocks, I'm leaving some white spaces, and I'm applying this darker tone, which is giving a hint at some of the edges of the rocks. This is done while it's wet so that I have soft edges. Later on, it'll be strengthened. What you see me working on now is the middle distance, and I'm creating those tiny islands, uh, extensions of the, the mainland, that are floating out in the water, uh, bluish gray to help them recede in the distance. And then as this big land mass comes forward, I'm using a warmer gray. The warmer gray is made up of those exact same colors, a little bit of cobalt blue, a little bit of cad red, some yellow, and a little bit of neutral tint. So it's a, it's a soup. It's a soupy color that has several ingredients, but I'm basically staying with those four colors that I mentioned. As I come down, you notice the wash is getting darker and warmer. This is important to note because it's an application of that graded wash used now in the land, not only the sky, not only in the water and rocks, but now in the land we're using a graded wash getting darker and warmer as it comes down. So here's another use of that graded wash. You can tell there's a bit more red in the foreground. Uh, that helps it come forward, and it's definitely darker. I'm going to extend that idea on the right side momentarily with uh, similar colors, a little bit of neutral tint, a little bit of the yellow ochre. Blend it in and create that very distant expression of forest uh, that we see beyond the pine trees. And this is, a, you can tell I'm using this dark that I'm just applying now to define the white. This white is actually going to be dried grasses. In a moment I'm going to be applying some yellow ochre to those grasses. But I'm taking the opportunity while the, the wash is wet to drop a little bit of red into that forest area, hinting at a change in season. Now I'm putting that yellow ochre in, and the first stage of this painting is nearly finished. I've established the lighter tones, established some of the texture in the stones, established a feeling of depth, and uh, the next stage will finish it.